Quantum Eraser first appeared on Nathan Oakley's Flat Earth Debate show, and he is a self-proclaimed expert on all things science. Unfortunately for him, that means nothing in the real world. He makes presentations on all sorts of topics and seems to think that he's invincible when it comes to any sort of rebuttal. Well, you know what that means, QE. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. So Quantum Eraser does have his own channel and if you're interested this is his intro. Dear, oh dear. Tragic, isn't it? Of course, some of you may remember Quantum Eraser from the time Conspiracy Cats absolutely ruined him when Quantum Eraser debunked himself. Below. How dare you? Below the horizon. No. Below. You can't prove it. Below the horizon. Tape your mouth shut. Absolute nonsense. Shut the door behind him and let Nathan savage him. Below. What the hell is your problem? Below. Recently, I saw a video of his where he talks about the sun. Quantum Eraser thinks that space and by extension all things in it are not real. And amusingly, he cites the second law of thermodynamics as the reason why. Let's sit back and watch his presentation, shall we? All right, the sun. So this is going to be pretty quick. I mean, it, uh... Back into the second law again. I mean, how many times, how, over how many subjects does the second law of thermodynamics come up in? Almost every single one of them. See what I mean? It can, yeah. It actually, it actually does. But yeah, a lot of people, it, it entropy is beyond some people, I think. It absolutely is. And some people claim to understand it too. When they don't. Hint, hint. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of people violate, you know, uh, uh, the laws of entropy in everything they say. I'm so shocked at it. Uh, it's and it's not only you know just just you know the regular Joes. You have that Sohu guy that was interviewed, uh, uh, that was talking about the sun. That was one of the first things he said. He said, oh, are you going to are you going to talk about the second law of thermodynamics? And I'm sitting there, I'm listening. It was Robert Pisano. I was sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Get him, Robert. Get him. But, uh, you know, Robert had to he had an agenda. He wanted to go over a lot of topics and, and let him off the hook. The guy brought it up himself. What amuses me the most out of all of this is that they're trying to use one law of science to refute other things about science. Hilariously, the man that coined the term entropy and did a vast majority of the work on the second law of thermodynamics, Rudolf Clausius, wrote his PhD thesis on the refraction of light during the day and at sunset and sunrise, something which destroys any flat earth explanation regarding observations over water. Very amusing. I nearly fell off the chair. <laughs> I said, yeah, stay here, stay here. Yeah, so this is gonna be pretty quick. So the standard model states that the sun is more or less a nuclear, nuclear reactor. Allegedly has an inner core temperature of 15 million Kelvin. So here's a picture. So you got the core right here. You got the radiative zone. You got the convective zone. So the surface of the sun is the, is the photosphere. Just above the photosphere is the chromosphere. And just above the chromosphere is the corona. So remember, it's 15 million Kelvin in here, and it's 5,800 Kelvin on the surface. Here we go. Mr. Science is going to try and refute that now. So here's a temperature profile. So on the y-axis, we have the temperature in Kelvin. So it goes from 1,000 on this scale to uh, 1 million. And the x-axis is the height above the convection zone. So we have the photosphere here. We have the chromosphere here and then the corona here. So what I want you to do, so 
just follow this. So it's, it goes from out here 15, let's say this is the uh, core of the sun here. It goes from 15 million Kelvin. But that's 1 million Kelvin, not 15. Come on, QE, try and be accurate now. All the way down, we're getting into the photosphere now. So it's dropped, the temperature's dropping down, dropping down, and it gets to about 5,800 Kelvin. So as you notice, as it, as it starts going towards the chromosphere, it begins to rise, right? And you're saying, uh-oh, there's kind of a little problem here. And it keeps going. And just at the transition point between the chromosphere and the corona, this guy goes rocket man. I mean, parabolic. From what? 10,000 Kelvin to what? 500,000 Kelvin? I mean, this is a rocket shot. And if it keeps going, if you keep this chart going, it goes to 10 million, way out here. The thing with the sun's atmosphere, which includes both the corona and the chromosphere, is the further away you get from the photosphere, then not only does the temperature increase, but the density of the hydrogen particles dramatically decreases. This means that the conditions are right for a peculiar property of gases when at high temperature and low density. When the gas is in the tens of thousands of kelvins, it is in an unstable state, which it means it cannot cool efficiently. That means that the temperature quickly rises into the millions of kelvins. However, we still do not know the source of the initial heating of the sun's atmosphere. Now it's thought that possibly the sun's magnetic field has a big part to play in that, but we still aren't 100% sure. So does everyone see the problem here? If you don't, I'm going to show you. So the inner core temp of the sun is 15 million Kelvin, like we said. The outer surface of the, of the sun, the photosphere, is approximately 5,800 Kelvin. On its way to and through the chromosphere, the temperature slowly rises, then goes parabolic from 10K to 150 uh, Kelvin. When nearing the corona, then it goes from 1 million Kelvin to 10 million Kelvin. So what's the problem? There isn't one. This actually happens. We have the data. Well, I suppose the fairy tale pseudoscience priest collectively <laughs> missed the lectures on the second law of thermodynamics. Heat really does flow up parabolic hills, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, this is preposterous. This is tantamount to standing near a wood stove, then moving back 500 meters because it's too hot, then you spontaneously combust. Yes, because the sun's atmospheric temperature, which has complex physics and magnetic fields, is exactly the same as standing next to a fire here on Earth QE, isn't it? Well done. This is what it's tantamount to. So, I don't know how to explain this. Oh really? But I thought you were the science man. Any more simply or more clearly. I really don't. I mean, this is a joke. This thing's a joke. So they're going to yeah. need a new Justo story for this one. And this is just icing on the cake. Um, these are the solar winds and the speed of uh, the ionized particles. This is hydrogen and oxygen. And <laughs> as you can see, I don't know if you can see this. It's real blurry on mine, too. This is 1 million miles per hour right here. And this is 2 million miles an hour here. So, the bars on the left show the speed of the ionized particles, hydrogen and oxygen, beginning on the surface of the sun, not that fast at all, then the Mercury right here, Venus, it's getting up to 1 million miles an hour here, and then the Earth. Uh, my question is, how is it speeding up? Space is huge, including our own solar system. Yes, the solar wind is accelerated by the gases in the corona and accelerates up to about 600 kilometers per second, but it does get to that top speed. There is possible evidence now that the solar wind actually slows down as it reaches the edge of our solar system. Uh, this is tantamount to putting Nolan Ryan on the mound, take the backstop out, have Nolan Ryan, Nolan Ryan fire a fastball gets to about 9,500 mile an hour as it crosses the plate, goes past the backstop to the concession stand, 
and it's hitting 110 miles an hour, then it's in the parking lot at 250. So, so that's preposterous. No, what's preposterous is your analogy. The correct analogy, in terms of the graph you've just shown, would be measuring the velocity of that baseball after it's thrown at one meter, then at two meters, then at three meters. You know the baseball will hit a top speed and then slow down, but your observations won't show this. I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> and they don't have an answer. I've been searching for a long. There is no answer to this. Well, just gave you one. Wasn't too hard. No coherent one anyway. I don't know. Maybe it's gravity. And oh, this is. I, I just wanted to finish up with this because I, I thought it was pretty cool for all the electrical engineers out there. So this is the voltage profile of the sun. As you can see, this is identical. This profile, you can superimpose a solid state PNP transistor right on top of this very profile. It's exactly the same. So I'm just going to leave that out there for you because there's a lot of people talking about this. I think Eric Dollard brought this up one time about oh. the sun being a transistor. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, one of his proofs was this. This slam dunk right here. Yes, QE, slam dunk. I don't think we need to continue further with this one, do we? QE is clearly an expert here, and his incredulity about the sun obviously means that everything we've understood about the sun up to now is completely wrong. He's so smart. I bet Quantum Eraser could tell us all sorts of other things about the solar system, like how we know about all the different size moons. I don't know how to explain this. Oh, okay. I thought... All right, what about the life and death of stars? I don't know how to explain this. Wow, okay. Um, could you tell us about electromagnetic radiation and how the heat from the sun reaches us here on Earth? I don't know how to explain this. I, I don't... Um, what about what heat is? I don't know how to explain this. What anything is? I don't know how to explain this. Sorry about this, guys. Perhaps Quantum Eraser was just having an off day. Um, you do know what the scientific method is, don't you, QE? I really don't. Oh, dear. Let's leave Quantum Eraser there for today, shall we? Bless him. Right, that brings another Tim Fall Tuesday to another spiffing conclusion. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it today, then please, please do like and subscribe. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the final episode of The Simon Dan Show. See you then.